All right, welcome to Speed of Cheese. Speed of Cheese. Nobody knows what the Speed of Cheese is. I am the only scientist, and we're going to use that word scientist a little loosely. You know what I mean. I'm the only scientist that's trying to discover what the Speed of Cheese is. In the whole freaking world, I'm it. I don't know. I, when, I think that when I finally discover what it is, it's Nobel Peace Prize, accolades, you know, wreaths, lays. It's going to be serious, and you guys are along for the ride. I'm telling you, this is going to be next level stuff. Let's get on to some serious uh, engine talk. So this is Rev 2 of the Land Speed Engine. It, we went with, uh, and this one, we went with a Nicosil aluminum sleeve, Nicosil uh, bore. You've got intake transfers that an iron liner is retaining the heat, heating up the intake charge. This is no good. We can't have that. So the other thing that I incorporated with all of the, the internal machining because you know we've got intake charge coming in and you want that to follow that curve where iron liners is it, it just you just don't have the room uh, you know you end up with such if you had a, this thick of a sleeve of iron it this is going to be the biggest heat sink ever it's going to be a disaster so you're trying to make it a little bit thin and none of this this makes any sense the aluminum liner is the way to go the problem with the the Nicosil and it is, so Nicosil is a, a, a nickel uh, matrix with uh, particles of carbide. Now, you know, carbide is it just insanely tough. I mean, that's what we use to cut metal with. And so that's what they, they uh, electroly, electrolysis, how do, I don't even know what the word is, but they uh, embed this stuff in the bore, and then they have to use, of course, a diamond hone to, to bore it to size because the stuff is so hard. And it lasts forever. I mean, I would think that your daily driver go to the grocery store, Nicosil liner or, or sleeve block bore would last a million years. I mean, I don't think anything would wear this out. You know, I think that we found some sort of chemicals. I know BMW had some problems with, you know, some uh, um, chemicals that were in some gas. I don't know. Maybe they were just making this up to justify shitty workmanship. Who knows? I love BMWs. Don't get me wrong. So this was terrific, except night, uh, 2015, um, I was at the test and tune on the salt, ran up through all of my licensing divisions. You have 100 to 125 is an E license. I could be wrong. E, D is 125 to 150, C is 150 to 175. So I bumped up through those, those classifications. I went for my C license and this thing ran so beautiful. I was thinking I'm in six gear uh, in the power, I've got to be running over 175, and you can't run faster than that. You have to run in that bracket to get that license. And I thought, I just gearing wise, as I'm processing in this, my head, I'm going way too fast. So about three quarters of the way in, and I, I pretty much coasted the last uh, quarter mile because on the salt, you're just timed. It's not like somebody's got a radar. So you don't really know what that time is. And I coasted the last quarter mile and it still ended up being, I think, 156 mile an hour pass. So this thing really, really does uh, well and I like that. The second run out after that, the top, the cover that holds the, the uh, that goes over the, 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 the cylinder head, it came loose, pumped all the coolant out of it. It got hot and it nicked you know, you can see the little teeny bridges, the exhaust bridges and between A and B transfer ports. It nicked just enough Nicosil off of one of those that it ruined the engine for the year. Because there's no way I can send it back in and have it re nicosilled and send it back in time. And yeah, you know, there's so much time in me machining these that I get one done a year. Um, I'm a working guy. I mean, I got other stuff going on, and you know, a sun and stuff, things. So to 
put a couple hundred hours in this is, is still a monumental amount of work. Okay, so we got that, the, the Nicosil covered. And that's why this last engine I went back to iron. I went really thin iron, trying to get rid of the heat, but it, it's still iron. And I'm able to, if I end up ruining a, a sleeve, I can, it's just a press fit, so I can just push it out. I could do it out on the salt, push it out and put a new one in. Although I've never had to do that, I would think that I would need to put it back in my fixture and rebore it, but I'm just in an emergency. It could be done. So this, where the last one was a one piece, what complete one piece, this one I went with two piece because it was the only way I could get in and do the auxiliary exhaust ports. As you can see, this was, the last cylinder was a single exhaust port. This is a, a triple. And it wasn't done very well, but I had limited knowledge. I still have limited knowledge. I think in two-stroke world, you never figure it out. But as, as, as far as I had gone then, and if you look in there, you can see great big square auxiliary ports, which is not the way to do it. Auxiliary ports need to be nice, tapered, triangle-shaped pieces because you've got the, the gases going in and out so much further there's no point in dropping them into a big dead room they don't have any place to go they have no velocity by that point so but it still it still worked out okay and of course these big huge square exhaust ports uh, which are just not the way to to do an exhaust port and they're way too low but it still ran good and I was still happy with with the results I got out of it the intake is it was kind of a copy of the RD 400 with the bridge down the middle a little bit different bridge down the middle and the boost port uh, if you can see that can you see that do we have focus I hope we're focusing because I don't want to do all this and then find out the goddamn thing isn't focused cut down the swearing so and the the transfer I went with a little bit bigger and I we had better roof angles than the RD400. The RD400 with the A port is in and it's like a 65 degree angle and it, there's it, it's just it kind of works. I mean it obviously it works, but it's nowhere near what, you know, co everybody's copying Aprilia uh, and and what Jan Thiel did. Um, and so it's got this has a much better roof angle. It seems like it was 25 and 15 and a much better hook to push that, that column of air um, up and over, you know, collide and up and over into the schnierl loop. Uh, so that worked out really well. So obviously the engine made good power. This, oh, I also added Boyson ports, which I'd totally forgotten that I'd put those on there. And I can't remember if it was, if it was good or not. Um, I don't think I ever did uh, say a back-to-back. -back. I think that I just incorporated those in right from the onset. But this engine ran good, although it had some, some frailty to it with the, the, the liners. The coolant, this is where I really started getting crazy with the coolant. So coolant underneath the crankcase and then comes up and in and around the cylinders and then into this the cavity which then comes in on one side over here and rolls around and back out and back down through the hold down bolts, the, the head, the complete assembly bolts, down into this side of the exhaust port, which then goes around the cavity which when this is separated, this is all machined and hollow and it comes around and then comes back out and then back in here and then up and then up and over the combustion chamber. So a lot of, a lot of detail that went into the, the cooling and of course now I'm starting to figure out that you know uh, low volume high velocity cooling is way more effective and, and works much better. I ended up to be able to seal this I put a, a machine to groove in the sleeve and in the cylinder and then I put these little indents so I was able to with a hypodermic needle inject epoxy around that 
it worked pretty well. I wouldn't do it again that way because right before race time, as of course I'm getting this together and everything comes down to the last second, I couldn't quite get it to seal and I was still getting coolant into the engine. Not a lot, just a little bit and I was starting to panic thinking what am I going to do? I mean I've got to be loaded up and headed to the salt tomorrow and so I ended up using some low viscosity Loctite and all I did was I just put a few drops in and then pressurized the whole system and like a uh, radiator stop leak it found where it was leaking and it sealed it up and it saved the saved the the day and so if you're ever in that uh, in that same predicament that low viscosity and I don't remember what it is they advertise it as low viscosity Loctite it did the trick and it was slick as anything and I uh, it was wonderful um, what else do we have with this? I think that that's about it. The rest of the engine was was pretty much the same as the previous engine. Uh, the lower end was all the same. Uh, 115 length connecting rods, which you know are all too short, but that's what the the, the 400 was running. So I had duplicated that. I think the next step is to go to a really long connecting rod because I have so much. Uh, side load on the intake side that I end up getting the piston that really beats the shit out of the bottom of the piston and the bottom of that that intake port and I think a longer rod would help that a whole bunch um, and it seems like the longer rods for the most part seem to uh, do a better job of making horsepower anyway you don't have that same uh, severe angularity and maybe relieve some of the friction anyway um, what else have we not covered? Did we cover everything on this? I think so. Uh, so next video I'll do, um, I've got the race bike, which I ran last weekend. It just was a disaster. Not, not terrible, but it just it wasn't right. I think that my game plan here is to go to fuel injection. And I, I think that the reason, and just because everything else in our world has gone to fuel injection, it seems to be infallible and wonderful now. I mean, I don't even think you could buy a carburetor, maybe on a, a chainsaw or something, but there just really isn't such thing as, because they work so well. And I think that we uh, have struggled with getting fuel injection to work on two strokes. KTM obviously has figured out Neil Hines's uh, system of going into the, tran into the transfers, shooting against the intake charges. Obviously, it worked well for him, which he did years ago, and then KTM went ahead and availed themselves of that, uh, that knowledge and ran with it. But obviously, it, it sorted itself out. Now, whether I can on the next revision somehow figure out how to get injectors down there is is a different story but I think my game plan is is to go with fuel injection um, and the one real uh, nice part about this is, is I run in a gas class and a fuel class and with a map change if I can just absolutely change over maybe change out a cylinder head to go to a higher compression but but swap that out swap a map out and and change over to running a different fuel um, is just awesome and would really be incredible um, and I think that that's about it so we're gonna take the race bike engine apart and probably this coming week because we've got uh, Thanksgiving and since my family doesn't really like me anyway, wink, wink, right? I can just hang out in the shop and work on race bike stuff. And so we get some piston testing done here in the near future. And uh, that's about it. I think that I'm just going to put that engine on the dyno and we're just going to beat the shit out of it until we've got some injection figured out. I've got to remake, I, I think the transfer ports on the th that engine are too big, so we're going to be on revision four for this uh, winter. And with a lot of changes, but I would like to be way better prepared than I was this year uh, with racing. Breaking connecting rod really put me behind. Then I was just constantly trying to fix broken stuff and completely behind the ball instead of uh, uh, in, in front of it and and hopefully we can get two engines done so I've got a spare so if something happens disastrous happens again I can be on it 
Okay, thanks for watching. Have a terrific holiday, Thanksgiving, and <laughs> go hang out with your, your family. Don't spend it working on stinky two-strokes. Good God, get yourself together.